Welcome to The Alcove. I'm Mark Malero. My guest today is Peter Yarrow. He is best known for being part of the legendary folk trio Peter, Paul, and Mary, as well as his decades of diverse and committed social activism. Peter recently was executive producer and host of a PBS special for teachers called Tribute to Teachers of America. The program featured a wide variety of guests, including Rosie O'Donnell and Bill Cosby. Here's a quick look at the program. You try and guess who it is, okay? You're, you're in for a joyous moment. He, name, has acquired the capacity to utilize the talent that he has. It is always an effort to make him work at his level. And I am afraid that if he goes on to junior high school and does not get individual prodding, he will lapse into poor marks. This is about a young man whose name is William. That was Mary B. Forchick. And she could write about the personality of every child in her class. People don't realize that teachers take on their profession. They study. They get credentials. Why? All of them say the same thing. I want to make a difference in the world. I want to make correct changes in the world. I want to help people in the world. They don't take this job because you get paid more money for teaching fourth grade than when you were teaching third grade. No, they do it because they see humanity and they want to make a difference in terms of saving it. Peter, welcome. That was a quick look, wasn't it? Yeah, <laughs> just like that. Right. Yeah. I'm glad to be here with you, Mark, and particularly glad because this particular program, I believe, will be viewed as being historic mm. at a particular time in the future. We have a gridlock around the issues of education. And because of the controversy uh, surrounding the direction of education in the United States, mm -hmm. uh, specifically the No Child Left Behind Act, and right. its, its intent and, and its uh, disastrously challenging problems, we have a debate about that that is, that is uh, put us in a bind in terms of moving forward to get out of the, the mess that has been created mm -hmm. by the negative aspects of No Child Left Behind. There is value to knowing how a child is doing. So yeah. testing to say, I know how they're doing. I know if they're doing better in uh, academic work is meaningful. But to use that in such a way that it frightens teachers, punishes schools so that they lie, kick students out who have disabilities, mm -hmm. they lie about how the kids are doing on the test because they're frightened that they'll lose their funding. That's it's right. a punitive system. Yeah. So um, we have problems in the schools now. Mm -hmm. And one of the reasons we have such grave problems is that there is so much focus 
on, uh, on academics. And, and in a frightening, punitive fashion, people have said they must do better in academics. But it's, um, it, the way it's structured, it's like saying, uh, you have to, your kids have to play golf this way, this well. Right. Okay? Mm -hmm. And if they don't play golf this well, you can lose your job, your accreditation at your school. And furthermore, uh, for this school, we're going to give you golf clubs made out of paper mache, and here we're going to give you uh, graphite golf clubs mm -hmm. because of the inequity of the monies for education. And you all have to perform at the same level. And then uh, it's like saying, um, uh, if you're... Uh, uh, that, that, that's, that's the measure of what makes America great. Performance. Perf golf, playing, playing golf. Sure. Now well, you'd say, are you crazy? Well, that's just about how crazy we are, thinking that education is solely about math, science, uh, n literacy. Yes, we need a literate population for democracy to function. Right. But much more importantly, we need the combination of the ability to read, think critically, make decisions, and have a heart. Uh, and we need people who are citizens who grow up to say, my, my role in life is not just to acquire things and show how much power, money, and fame I, I have acquired, but, right. uh, but to, to, to be joyously a part of celebrating what society is mm -hmm. and it, can be a part of. And yeah. if, we, if we don't, therefore, combine the social development, the emotional development, with the academic development, teaching to all the needs of the child, what are we going to get? Number one, we're going to get kids that don't do well academically mm -hmm. because they're living in an environment in which they're afraid. The, 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 if you're not attending to the, the emotional and social needs of schools, then you don't not, you're not dealing with the fact that you don't have to have a Columbine or a Paducah or a Springfield killing. Mm -hmm. To, to make that school dysfunctional. Yeah. All you've got to do is have the teasing, the bullying, the disrespect going on, and those kids can't think, and the teachers leave now after five years. My mother was a high school teacher for 30 years. Okay. And when that happens, you need to break this impasse. And how do you do it? Mm -hmm. We have done it in one way, through the show, a tribute to the teachers of America, broadcast on PBS, right. but also that will be going to the classrooms of America. Now, it's interesting because I was just going to say that the connection here between your music, folk music, and education, the values that you've just talked about are very much holistic folk values. The, the idea going back to the 60s and, and even before that of creating whole human beings. Yes. Because I think a lot of people would say, okay, you're doing a music special, but what is the connection with education? And as you're saying, we're trying to create whole human beings. Right. Yeah. Well, you notice, if, you see, if you're arguing logically with people and you say, the first job and you can do this with a lot of children. The first job of education, make sure you close the education gap so that African-American students and Hispanic students and other minority students and poor students, which is even more, mm -hmm. are, are, are doing as well as uh, Caucasian students. Admirable, uh, you know, uh, pursuit, but yeah. you can't get there without understanding that what makes a child grow academically has to do with the entire environment. Right. So uh, how do we assert that in this show that um, we are 
that we really are interested in education in a broader sense. Okay. Yes. Sir. Watch, watch the um, the 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 expression of gratitude of, uh, for instance, uh, of Rosie O'Donnell. Right. Yeah. She's not saying, uh, I want to thank my teacher who helped me get an A on a paper. Mm. She's talking about a teacher who took on five girls whose mother died and invested them, taught them all, mm -hmm. and invested them with a sense of possibility. She said, I wouldn't have made it. And it still brings me to tears. Mm -hmm. She's not thanking a teacher for academic work. Right. Yeah. Bill Cosby, he's talking about the selflessness of teachers. Why do we honor teachers? Do we honor them because they're getting their kids to get high marks on the high stakes exams for No Child Left Behind? On the contrary. Right. Because they inspire, because they stimulate the imagination. That's what's important. You know, what are we thanking them for? Exactly. So what's the subtext here? We're not thanking teachers for getting high marks. We're thanking get teachers for what they went into the profession for. That's right. To watch children grow into whole, caring human beings. I'm That's why this show, Yes. not hammering people over the... If I had a hammer, I wouldn't hammer people over the head with logic. I would make a sound that turns into music and says, listen to the heart of what this is saying. Watch this show and you will see that everybody there is of single purpose. Nobody is saying, I have another thing to talk about. I want to hawk this. I want to sell that. Where Nobody gets paid in this show. Right. You know what this show is? Mm -hmm. Do you know that I organized a march on Washington in 1969 for half a million people? I do. With yes. Carl Weiss. Mm -hmm. It's the same format. Mm -hmm. Sing a song, make a tribute. Sing a song, make a statement. Sing a song. But instead of doing it as a march, it's a media phenomenon that'll go out to the television stations and then people will watch it and then an elongated version of it mm -hmm will go to the classrooms that has more of an emph emphasis on the tributes and more of an emphasis on the youngest performers. And I was just, I was just going to say, I know that you have said, um, you know, in terms of the success of Peter, Paul, and Mary, yeah. for instance, you've talked about saying that, you know, we're part of a long train ride. I know you were very much inspired by the Weavers and, you know, going back to Woody Guthrie and these kinds of sure. things. I'm wondering, how did you develop these folk values as a young man through such a turbulent but interesting period like the 60s. What, what were some of the lessons that you learned at that time that then led you to you know, make the connection now with education and all these kinds of things? How did you develop those ideas? My mother was a teacher. Mm, okay. A high school teacher for over 30 years. You'll hear my daughter who's singing on this show right. talk about uh, Nona. The grandma, that's Italian for, for grandma. Okay. And saying um, she was more than a teacher, she was also a role model, a, a brave human being who was an early member of the teachers' union when that was not necessarily something that was a benefit. As a matter of fact, it was considered subversive to be a member of a union. Mm -hmm. So my mother... Mm -hmm was a deeply dedicated activist in her own arena, okay. political, social activist, mm -hmm. who also was a teacher. Most teachers, or teachers in elementary, middle, and high school, mm -hmm. are progressive in their thinking. And right. they love Peter, Paul, and Mary because we inherited a tradition that speaks to what it is that motivates them to uh, be teachers. Yeah. We speak to a tradition that says what is precious in our lives is trying to heal the world, make the world a better place, mm -hmm. having fun, loving each other, falling in love, telling history. <laughs> That's all great. Yeah. But 
there is not a teacher out there, I would venture to say, that would watch those um, uh, reality shows where people are humiliated that isn't angry and embarrassed right. at watching people compete to show how much they've lost any sense of their own internal worth. Mm -hmm. Or watching people expertly humiliating other people and putting them down. And that's a lot of what's going on in television. And you know what kids do? Right. They watch that, not like an adult. Just like a child does not hear his or her parents fighting the way the, the, the parents do. For them, that scares the hell out of them. And they, mm -hmm. these kids, when they watch those shows, learn how to be mean. We are teaching kids through adult media it's like the Roman circus, except they're not lions killing Christians. Right. They are people humiliating other people. And if you're Jewish, as I am, mm -hmm. you know that humiliating somebody in public is about as bad a thing as you can do. It's yeah. really painful. But look what's happened out of that. We have people like, uh, uh, you know, uh, Paris Hilton, that take pleasure in exposing their dysfunctionality. Right, yeah, absolutely. And they, or Donald Trump, Mm -hmm. who takes pleasure in being a bully. What do we expect our kids to be like if we don't have a countervailing force? If we don't have something that says, look, look at, the, says what this show says. Yeah. Look how much joy we have. Look how much appreciation rather than put downs mean. Now one thing I was gonna say, it's interesting because it seems like there's maybe never been such a need in the US to have some of these holistic folk values prevalent now. If you look at the environmental movement, if you look at the state of the country right now, a lot of people are saying, is there gonna be maybe a shift back to some of the maybe more progressive parts that are maybe poor, you know, more part of the American tradition? Are you hopeful at this time? Are you seeing, for instance, the next generation of young people, are they picking up that mantle that the last generation left for them? Are you, are you hopeful? Well, yes, there are young people who are doing that. Yeah. Uh, and a lot of them are, but on the whole, mm -hmm. the, the great trend is to buy Britney Spears albums and read those magazines that are fascinating to kids because they are expositions of dysfunctional aspects of relationships of stars. They worship fame mm -hmm. for fame itself. Right. Just like Monica Lewinsky is famous, worship it. Paris Hilton is not famous for, you know, her having won uh, the, uh, a prize in literature, for her playing an instrument brilliantly, right. for being a great basketball player, yeah. for her uh, winning the prize for literature. She is famous for, for dysfunctionality famous. with money. Right. Right. Now that, that, how vulgar. Yeah. And to, to, and to realize how comprehensive that is and to not allow performers to have their own personal lives and to glory in the, the, the dilemmas of fame. You know, fame, being an actor is tough. I'm the same person I am on and off stage. You watch the, the show, mm -hmm. you know, a tribute, the same guy is talking to you as talking to the audience. Right. You know, who is in love with his life because I haven't reached the point and said, you know, I've got a 12,000 square foot home now <laughs> and, and I'm, you know, it's time to start giving back. I, because of my mom and her value system, because of folk music, mm -hmm. that, that if you're singing folk music, it's going to, it's, it's like a positive virus. It's going to invade your spirit, your soul, and, and what Woody Guthrie did, and what Pete Seeger, and mm -hmm. the Weavers, mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and Josh White, and all those people, they, you're going to be carrying that in your heart, and you'll be standing on their shoulders. And they'll give you the language 
that carries you through life mm -hmm. of something so rewarding. Every time I sing, I remember why I'm so fortunate, why life is so wonderful. Yeah. I can be standing here, s s sitting here and talking and talking. Mm -hmm. And I'm serious and I'm intense, but the moment I sing, the froggy went a court and he did it right, uh huh, uh huh. I'm not, I'm really enjoying this moment. Absolutely. And I believe that when kids sing like that together, when they sing, this land is your land, this land is my land, that it's a political act. Why? Because they're saying, we're feeling good as a community. Yeah. Life is about something that seeps through us when we're singing together. Mm -hmm. Whether it's Peter Paul and Mary singing on the March on Washington in 1963, mm -hmm. singing, the answer, my friend, is blowing in the wind. Or if I had a hammer, <laughs> I had a hammer in the morning. You know, yeah. it, whatever it is, when we do this together, we break through the cynicism. Exactly. We break through the uh, insularity. We break through the selfishness, the greed, and we break through the tendency to push the other away. You're not the right religion, Mark. You're not the right color. Right. You, you eat funny food. You, look, you wear strange clothes. <laughs> right. You know, I'm not going to play with you. Yeah. Guys, don't play with Mark. <laughs> he's, 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 a, he's a loser, this guy. We're not going to play. How does that feel? That's the way it feels to kid. And you're an adult. Yeah. And it feels ten times as bad. And if you were to say to me, Peter, you know, I know because I know I was brought up. You're a Jew. And you, Jews are avaricious. And you're going to cheat me. Mm, yeah. And, and I know that. L look at Shakespeare. You know, you're a Jew, man. You know. Wow. Get out of here. I have a friend who's, who's an agent, and his, his daughter, uh, who is in second grade, mm -hmm. came home hysterical. This kid in the class said, get out of here, you Jew. No, I, you may not be able to put this wow. on here, but sorry. No, it's okay. And she said, what did you say? He said, get out of here, you Jew. Wow. And she was hysterical. Yeah. I flew down. Yeah. And I was in front of the whole school singing the song you're going to see on Tribute. Mm -hmm. I'm a little boy with glasses, the one they call a geek. A little girl who never smiles because I've got braces on my teeth. Mm -hmm. And I know how it feels to cry myself to sleep. I'm the kid on every playground. I'm the one that's chosen last. I'm a single teenage mother trying to overcome my past. You don't have to be my friend, but is it too much to ask? Don't laugh at me. Don't call me names. Don't get your pleasure from my pain. In God's eyes, we're all the same. Someday we'll all have perfect wings. Don't laugh at me. I'm fat. I'm thin. I'm short. I'm tall. I'm deaf. I'm blind. Hey, aren't we all? I'm black. I'm white. And I am brown, I'm Jewish, I'm Christian, I'm Muslim, I'm Buddhist, Hindu. Hmm. I was born in Sarajevo, I was born in Kosovo, I was born in Northern Ireland, I was born in Africa, I'm Hutu, I'm Tutsi, I'm gay, I'm lesbian, I'm American Indian. I'm very, very young. I'm getting up there, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. If we can't interrupt the cycle of pushing away the other, 
so that our kids break that cycle and say, we are okay. Yeah. You're okay, you're different, but you're okay. Yeah. If we can't do that, we're not going to have a world of peace because the adults carry their prejudices after the age of 15, 20, 30, certainly. Mm -hmm. You think you're going to turn me into a bigot? Mm -hmm. Not easy. Yeah. Do you think if you said when you popped out of the womb, Peter, you were avaricious, you're a Jew, you're, you're lazy, you're Hispanic, you're, uh, you're, you're, you're stupid because you're black, do you think I'm going to convince you? You'll obey the laws, but you'll impart that to your kids. Or you're, is, you're Israeli, uh, you're, is, you're Israeli, and therefore, uh, and, well, th those people are, are, um, are, are, are Israeli. And those people are uh, uh, going to deprive you as a Palestinian of ever having a life. Pretty hard to start with that. Or, yeah, yeah. Or, or on the other side, yeah. you know, those people are Palestinians. They want to kill everyone. Every one of them is a potential terrorist. Watch out! Right, yeah. Get away from them. Don't play with them. Don't go near them. 50% of Americans, adult Americans, believe that anybody who is uh, Muslim, 50% of Americans believe that anybody who is Muslim is that far away from being a terrorist. It's not the case. Of course not. That, no. that, 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 that if that person is Israeli, they want to kill all Palestinians or destroy their lives. There is a group of Israelis that absolutely says, this is our land, this is Eretz Israel, get out of it. Mm -hmm. You have no right to it, and no matter what, you are not going to have it. And there is, and therefore, you know, anything that gives you rights here to our Israel, you know, that you can't be. And there is a group of Palestinians that is dedicated to, uh, to retribution. Yeah, absolutely. How do we get beyond retribution? Only with children. Only with children who could say, there was a Children of War tour mm -hmm. that one of the defendants in uh, the Harrisburg conspiracy trial, mm -hmm. uh, um, Rabbi uh, Mayer, put together where Palestinian, Israeli child, for instance, or, you know, two sides, Hutu and Tutsi would say, you killed my parents, your people killed my parents, you, you are, you're, you're, and then the other one said, and my cousin was tortured by your people, and they get together and they, they embrace and they cry, mm -hmm. and they say, we've got to do better. I was in Israel, and I asked the kids, could you, if you were given the power, do you think you could put it, yes, let's sit down and talk. We yeah. can do better. We don't have to, we have to stop this. So here again. A six-year-old kid in the hand-in-hand schools, hand-in-hand schools, hand-in-hand, says, as a child, what, what would you do if you could run the whole city? I'd say, you guys have to sit down and talk it out and decide how to share it. And if you can't figure it out, it doesn't belong to either of you. Hmm. There you go. What? These kids have the answers. These kids are not pawns for us to move around to shape their lives and say, now we're going to make it better. These are our it's the future. allies. Yeah. And they're smart and they have yeah. an ethic until they're taught. You've got to be taught to hate and fear. It doesn't, you don't come out hating and fearing. Yeah, so again, the critical thing, like you're saying, is to capture children are naturally holistic. Catch, them, right. catch them before society turns, turns them, them to hate themselves and hate others. That's right. And I was wondering again, you know, it's such a challenging time, again, when you look at the environment, when you look at a lot of the politics that are happening in the U.S. and abroad. Yeah, yeah. And again, people are overwhelmed by so much information and things like this. Um, again, if somebody's watching this and they want to take, again, folk values in their daily life, what would you say to just a regular person that says, look, I'm a concerned citizen. Yeah. I do care. I want to actually do good in my life. Uh, How, what can I do with that? Okay, well, I think that that's, uh, that's important. Listen to Steve Seskin's song mm -hmm. in, the, in the expanded version. 
And he says he got a letter from his brother saying how sorry he was that he teased him. Mm -hmm. When in our society do we hear somebody apologize for hurting somebody else? When do they Very say, <laughs> I was wrong? Yeah. No, no, don't say wrong. It's a sign of weakness. <laughs> when does our president really look at the... When have we as a country looked at what we did in Vietnam and said, this was understandable, this was based on a lie mm -hmm. and a system that lied to us. This was perverse. This is horrible. How many people have died in, 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 in Iraq? Yeah. Did we ever have to go in there? If we hold it in our hearts that we're going to try and justify that as we have Vietnam, we will be a country twice, thrice burdened. We still, if you go to a dinner table and you talk about your, the Vietnamese war and you have different points of view, somebody's going to get up and leave the room. Mm -hmm. And leave the table if it's written. That's it. It sure. happens all the time. Sure. This nation is plagued by an inability to say, I'm human and a great person is still human, and a great person says, I was wrong. Mm -hmm. I, I am sorry. Okay? If you want to do something, and I'm addressing this to you, the camera, because camera, it's a good question mark. Sure. Wherever you live, you will see that there are people who have been injured by inequity, by a system that has made life difficult for them rather than been fair about economic equity, mm -hmm. by a situation where their, the accessibility to medical care has not been there and there's been an injury or a death, where there is a toxic waste site where people have had their children who grew up with disabilities and disfigured, where, where whatever is happening, if you want to be a peacemaker, start to inculcate the one thing that will humanize us again. Get a group of people and go to that place. It's a schoolyard or, you know, uh, where uh, uh, that needs a jungle gym or ever, and say, you know what? We, um, we don't think it's fair. Our kids over there have a jungle gym, <laughs> and we don't, you don't have a slide, you don't have everything. We're going to build a playground for you. Do you want to know what, what you feel like? You feel like I do every day of my life, because I've been given the extraordinary opportunity to be useful. Why do people get old and depressed? Because and, they no longer feel useful. Yeah, they can't be of service. They, that's what, yeah. go to a hospice. I'm on the board of a hospice, and a big, are they talking about money? Are they talking about big apartments or BMWs? Or no, mm -hmm. it's all about the people they love. If you want to be part of building peace, I'm not just talking about being an advocate for political change and policy change, uh, etc., And I'm not just talking about volunteer work. I'm talking about inculcating in our world, in our society, uh, a culture of forgiveness, mm -hmm. a culture of transparency, so we don't walk around like the emperor who has no clothes and say, <laughs> we're fine, America. You know how fine we were in the 1950s when I went to high school? how fine uh, we were when we said, with liberty and justice for all, and you couldn't go to our nation's capital and sit there at a restaurant or a lunchroom or use the same toilets as an African-American or African-American, the same as a white person, or sit in the same part of a bus. Or, and there was a lynching once every three days. Right. And Marian Anderson, who sang of the Met, Metropolitan Opera was not allowed to sing in Constitution Hall. How dare we walk around and say, America, without saying, 
America is a great land because we are a citizenry, citizenry that will hold our feet to the fire if we do not act justly. That's being American. Yeah. Not singing a song and saying, whatever we have done, we're the best. Yeah. What will that lead to? War. Yeah. That will lead to being the most excoriated, the most hated nation in the world. And that's what we have become. Right. And so essentially, again, it's this idea that it's up to us. It's not necessarily up to just the political leaders. It's up to every citizen. Political leaders ain't going to do it. Yeah. yeah. They're not, they're not, they're, they are struggling because just what happened in Nazi Germany happened in this country. Mm -hmm. Something called 9-11 was taken and used as a, as a tool to frighten America and to say we are all at, in deathly risk rather than saying, like they do in, in Israel, for all their difficulties, they do know the difference between a terrorist attack and a war. Right. We never were a, a nation at war. Mm -hmm. But if we are a nation at war, people believe that, then they say, now we have special, uh, we have special um, dispensation to do away with the Constitution, to torture people with uh, backboarding or whatever it was. Uh, the uh, oh, waterboarding. Waterboarding, yeah. thank you. Yeah. Uh, to uh, we can uh, suspend habeas corpus. Mm -hmm. We don't have habeas corpus. We don't have a democracy, because you can you can uh, imprison anybody because they disagree with the central government. Yeah, that's where we are. Yeah, people, our America is in jeopardy, and in order to start someplace, stop fighting about what is being fought about on the terms of the people who have frightened us. Just proclaim. Gratitude to the people who are humane. Yeah. Put the energy into that, and you'll be a peacemaker. Put the energy mm -hmm. into, the, into the gridlock, and you'll be doing hard work to try to keep us from slipping farther. And that has to be done. It does. But yeah. if we have not combined that with doing all the hugging and all the loving that you see on this television show, which is a model for behavior. Yeah. Look, you can believe in anything. This is not about being Republican or Democrat. Mm -hmm. It's about, because I know a lot of wonderful Republicans I'm working with who have all the humanity in the world. It's about people who are feeding on fear and dividing people so that they can get their political agenda across in such a way that they kill a democracy. Yeah. A democracy cannot exist unless we have the kind of teaching that allows the humanity of kids to emerge unscathed and not repeating I'm pushing you away phenomenon. And I guess maybe my last question then is are you hopeful? Are you seeing hopeful signs when you're, you know, you're currently touring with Peter, Paul and Mary? Um, are you seeing that, that message being reflected back to you? I am, uh, yeah. but I would say it's about as difficult to struggle as we've ever had. I'd say the chances right now are 50-50 that we will be a nation in serious, serious decline. Mm -hmm. But I'm not, I'm a patriot. I believe in what made America so special in the ways that it has been special. Yeah. I love that in us. I love that vitality. I hate to see America, you know, so engaged in superficialities rather than in heartfelt human kind of exchanges. Right. You remember when we felt each person mattered and that we all had to care or all was lost. But now you see believers turn to cynics and you wonder, was the struggle worth the cost? And then you see someone too young to know the difference and the veil of isolation in their eyes. And inside you know you've got to leave them something or the hope for something better slowly dies. Carry on, my sweet survivor, carry on, my lonely friend.
Don't give up the dream. Don't you let it end. Carry on, my sweet survivor. You've carried it so long. So it may come again. So it may come again. I know that it shall come again. So we'll carry on. Yes, we'll carry on, Mark. Thank we will. You. Thank you. There's no choice. We'll carry on. Thank you, and thanks for being here. A great pleasure. Okay. Thank and you. And thanks for joining us. We'll see you again soon.